What's up? I'm gonna do a video on fractals today, and um, I'm gonna be doing a video on mysticism. If not, if it's not right after this, if you see it already posted, then it's already up, obviously. But uh, both those videos are gonna be real connected. But uh, when it comes to fractals, um, let me start with, I guess, here. So when it comes to fractals, um, here we go. Actually, to even take it back a step, so I did a video on uh, decoding, um, and then I'd, I've done a couple of videos on Hebrew and why, um, and explaining a little bit about Hebrew. But it's important to understand Hebrew and decoding because and uh, how to decode things, just because um, of basically what I'm about to get into. So. When you look at uh, when you look at fractals and symmetry, those are basically some of the those are basically understanding a lot of the you could call them universal laws. So I don't really want to spend long on this at all because I don't want to make this video long. So and I'm not showing you these saying like um, trying to support these laws or anything, but understanding kind of what I'm talking about will just break down a lot a lot of these laws so understand this is kind of going into I'll be going into to a lot of correspondence polarity uh, cause and effect I guess rhythm as well a bit but uh, cause and effect and gender so to me gender polarity cause and effect they're all kind of explaining a duality principle and that duality principle kind of is explaining symmetry so when it comes to symmetry, symmetry has a lot to do with um, oh, that's a lot. symmetry has a lot to do with um, mirroring, basically, and uh, balance between two different sides of things. So, if you haven't really looked into it too deep and you haven't noticed it, but pretty much we learned this in school and elementary and things like that. We use these little mirror tools and we learned it in math class, but. Uh, symmetry, for the most part, explains this duality principle, this uh, polarity. Polarity is kind of a little bit slightly different, but it's all coming from the same source of uh, information. So, for the most part, we all kind of understand what symmetry is. Like, even if you look at, like, it's kind of splitting a line down the middle of something, and on the simplest sense of explaining it, it's like putting a line down. Well, excuse me, it's putting the line down the middle of something and showing the symmetry on both sides, you know, or, like it, it's really, it's really just showing how, um, basically there's like, um, evenness to a lot of things, and when you look at a human being too, it's like, when you split it right down the middle of a person, you see the two eyes, the two nostrils, you know, it, it, there's just really symmetry in everything, and that's kind of really important to understanding what we get into, so, um, actually, even before we get into the Hebrew part, so in one of the videos, where is this picture? Yeah, one of the videos I explained about dimensions, and uh, understanding about dimensions is definitely real important. Um, Because when you understand the universe and the dimensions and so on, <coughs> you'll understand kind of how, uh, where this understanding of fractals came from. So even, actually, <laughs> before I get into this, I should probably explain what a fractal is. A fractal is basically repeating mathematical code. A lot of people would be like, why is math important? Better? Well, our whole universe is based off of math, so it's pretty important to understand math. But a uh, fractal is a subset of uh, Euclidean space for which the fractal, I think this has to do with uh, linear algebra, but Euclid Euclidean space for which the fractal dimension strictly exceeds the, topo the topological dimension. So basically, it's just explaining a repeating pattern, and it could be growing, it could be shrinking, whatever. But that repeating pattern, um, it basically, how do I even put this? It's always growing, shrinking, it could be really whatever it is, but, let me see, 
see if I can... See, these are already pretty crazy images to look at. So, on a simpler sense... Um... This also has to do with, like, crop circles and all that kind of stuff. But... Can you look at fractals on almost, like, a linear... Basically, there's a certain type of way you could see this on like a more two-dimensional, um, two-dimensional explanation that makes it a little bit easier to understand. Kind of like this. So a fractal sequence is kind of just like how you see it, like a line, and then it kind of, like there's another line, and then there's another line, and it's kind of just getting, that one line is kind of multiplying and um, growing out of each other, but when you look at it from either side, if you're looking at it from kind of one angle, you just see one line here. Like if you're looking at it from this side, you just kind of see one line. You look at it from here, you see one line. You look at it from here, you see one line. You see one line. Depending on your perspective, you're going to see one line, but if you're looking at it from like a bird's eye point of view, you're going to see all these repeating patterns of either just the one line or the kind of uh, this shape right here, you know? And it keeps repeating over and over. So it's not really the best explanation, but it's basically a repeating mathematical uh, formula, and I'm kind of going to explain how that works, so... Yeah, I'll just explain more of so how it works. It kind of goes based off of how the universe essentially was created, so if you understand numbers in general, from zero, there's only really nine numbers, and then every number after that becomes a compound, right? So the number like 25 is a compound between 2 and 5. And then when you understand numerology, which goes into Germatria, which goes into the Hebrew portion I'm going to get into, um, 25 would be a compound of 2 and 5 in the numeral numer like using numerology, you break it down, add them together, and you get the number 7, right? So then you break it down to, to, to a prime number. And now, it could be any number, right? 5,550. It's just a bunch of numbers added. Like, it, it's just a bunch of numbers, like 1,234. It'd be four numbers. It, it's just a compound of the prime numbers, but, or the original. I don't really want to say prime because prime can mean uh, the Fibonacci sequence of numbers, but the uh, non compound numbers. So you have one through nine being those numbers, and zero is basically the nothing or the no, like, the, it's like no state. It's like a basically a form of, uh, uh, basically just like a, I don't want to say nothing in the sense that most people think of nothing, but it's basically a space, like a portal essentially, if you want to call it that, but this space of zero, there's no dimensions, when you look at, when you understand mathematically, the number zero has no dimensions to it, so when using this law of symmetry, it's like, symmetry also has to do with duplication as well. It's uh, not one and the same, but they're tied together. It, it gets correspond together. Now, when you look at how things duplicate and basically replicate, this is kind of what I'm going to get into. This is basically what I'm going to get into with the fractals. So, if you look at this number, I've already explained this in, I think, the dimension video, but um, I'm just going to explain it quickly here for the sake of this, this video. So when you see the zero, basically when it's replicating itself. So if you didn't have this line right here, if you had a dot here and then a dot, well a dot here and a dot here. The thing that connects it between each other, the two dots, is the number one. Like you can see how it even looks like number one, the line, right? And it becomes the one dimension. Then that's basically, if you put a mirror here and then when you see a mirror it reflects, like when I was explaining symmetry, it reflects the, the object back, right? So if you put a dot and then there's enough, the mirror would basically reflect another dot. And that second dot connecting the two is basically a dimension connecting the two. So this is even how you know mirrors are portals, and, you know, so on, things like that. But um, when those, that one connects to each other, again, that's, it looks like a number one. And also if you look at the original way, like in English, I guess, but the original way, um, Number block number. 
Okay, yeah, I don't really want to get too much into the numbers, because this isn't really a video about dimensions, I'm just kind of explaining this quickly for the sake of um, having a base understanding while I get into this, but there's this is like an okay representation, there's a better way to represent it, but um, it kind of shows you the angles between it, so that there's, um, basically these numbers relate to the dimensions, is, is the simplest way I'm going to put it, and uh, if I can find the original kind of way, it's almost like Roman numerals are kind of a better way to do it, but it was after Roman numerals when we came up with the, when these nine numbers kind of appeared like this, but not essentially in this exact way, it's kind of like these block number forms, and they show how many angles are between things, and that relates to the dimensions, and so on, but um, I'm not going to waste time on that. So, what I'm getting at is this mirroring effect. So when you put a mirror here, it reflects it, right? So the reflection of this dot, you're going to get a second dot. Like when you look at yourself in a mirror, you see yourself in front of you, right? And it's a reflection of you. Now there's like two of you when you look at the mirror, right? It is, uh, it's like a, it's completely, it's, just, it's you, but it's in opposite. You see it in the reverse image, right? So that's kind of what happens here. You get a reverse image version. You kind of have like a mirror. You get a reverse image version of this, right? And then you have one dime. You have a. You get the line because these now are two independent from each other. Like when you're looking at the mirror, that's you, but it's in a different location from you. You know, like the image itself is appearing in the mirror. So the thing that connects the two together is a dimension, the two dots. So you have the mirror. You have another dot. You connect it with the, two, with the number one. It even looks like the number one, right? But you connect the line. You get two. You get the one dimension. Two different variables. The x and um, um, yeah, sorry. This you get. You get two. You get basically the first variable, which is x. So this you can look at this as uh, width, right? Uh, you can look at it as width or length, really. But for the sake of this, we're just gonna call it length just to get through this quick. So length. Now you put another mirror here. You duplicate the the whole line now. You get a second line that's now the reverse of this line, right? You connect them with length. Now you got, or height, we'll call this height, because, you know, height. But we'll call this width, and then we got height. So we got two dimensions, red and green, width and height. Now you put a mirror, you get two, you get two of these squares. You get one, one square right here, one square right here. Now you connect it with another third variable, that third, or third dimension, sorry, and that third dimension would be width. So we got height, length, width. Now, to get into the fourth dimension, you mirror that cube, you get another cube, and then you connect all those dots together, and then you got the fourth dimension. That fourth one, we can call it depth. For the, we can call it depth. Now, no, or X, Y, Z, and W, right? Now, that's understanding dimensions, right? But as you can see the pattern, um, you do this on and on and on for more and more dimensions, and it operates off the principle of symmetry or mirroring, right? And now, this kind of has to do, this is basically what I'm going to get into with fractals. So, zero has no dimensions, by the way, to start with. It has zero dimensions. Now, and I'm going to talk about math a little bit more in the mysticism video because, as you can see, we learned this all in math class in elementary school, you know, element, elementary school, but um, people don't really understand the, the purpose of it, and the reason we don't understand the purpose of it and the, code, the coding behind it is um, it's actually important that we don't understand it. So now in movies, you can call this the fourth dimensional cube. You can look at that as the tesseract, the hypercube, also in real life called the hypercube. It's the cube inside the cube. So, you know, you had you saw the two three-dimensional cubes that got mirrored, right? No, I don't want to guess, but you can see that there's a cube inside of a cube, and there's... No, that's too tricky. So I don't need that. <laughs> um, okay, so there's a cube inside of a cube, right? And you can see this one is now depth, and as you can see, why would we call it depth? Because it's going into the cube. It's going, going inside of itself, basically. This is one way to represent it. You don't have to represent it, represent it with a cube inside of a cube. It could be two separate cubes connected to each other, but this is just a good way to represent it, or a good way to, so that you can understand it a lot easier. Now, this is kind of hard for most people to, under, to understand, because um, 
representing the fourth dimension becomes a really tough thing for most people to even understand. So hypercubes is like a, you see, it's kind of harder to understand in this perspective. It's easier to understand it like this, but um, hypercubes become a important um, topic when it comes into quantum physics and other things, right? Now, when you look at this cube, and then let's say we had two of these cubes and then you connect them together. That's kind of how you get into a fifth dimensional perspective of things. So, for mathematically at least. So before we even, before we do that, well, we're not going to do that in this video. We're, but that, this is just for the sake of understanding for this video. So I'll stop it there. For that part at least. Then, so, now going off of that, you can, basically understand that if they work off of fractals, there's a certain, because in all my videos, you, you hear me talk about that. The main two principles of the universe is symmetry or that duality principle and the Fibonacci spiral. Now, that Fibonacci spiral is that, this is basically, you can see this as that zero, that nine, and that number five. Now, um, the way it represents the number five Okay, so when you see the number 5, right, you see this and this, right? This is half a circle, this is half a square. This is a square circle, phi. Phi, when you see phi, or phi cycle, or physical, right? Physics. Phi is abbreviation for physical layer. Um, long phi. But as you can see, phi cycle. So the golden ratio, right, is five, which is also five. So when you see five, what I'm getting at is, even when you look at the, Fibon the Fibonacci spiral, is also called the golden ratio. This is the, the Fibonacci spiral, the spiral, right? And it's coming out of that zero point. So square and circle. Now, you can clearly see that we have squares and we have a circle. <laughs> we have a circle, and that circle is creating it, you can always mathematically look at it within, you can look at it through any geometrical shape, but the square is a really under, a good way to understand it now. This has, you can see with, um, with more so melanated people, the way our hair comes out, it comes out in that nine spiral, right? It also represents the number nine. So you can look at the number nine, the number zero, and the number five when you're understanding the Fibonacci spiral. And um, you can see the square and the circle, and that's why it's called as you can see, this is called literally phi, the Fibonacci spiral. Um, the, num the, 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 numer the numerical value of this spiral is called phi. So, obviously it has to do with the number five, because I just showed you the square and the circle, and it has to do with the uh, physical, the phi cycle, and when I say phi cycle, I mean, I'm just going to type it here so you can see the word phi. Um, Cycle, physical, phi cycle, right? Um, so the cycle, the cycle of number five, basically, which is the physical realm, but more so on that in a bit. So I'm just going to show you first, of, first of all, a few different representations of the Fibonacci spiral and how. Okay, so quick, actually, before I get into that, what I'm trying to get at is that Fibonacci spiral is basically a spiral that's never-ending, and that never-ending spiral basically with the square, the square is representing the point of, because you already know squares are not natural, like, there's no natural square in nature, like, any, anything that gets created is in the spiral fashion, but there's nothing gets created in the square fashion, but with the square, Basically, you can create, using the circle and the square, you can create basically anything in the physical, in the pi cycle. Understanding that also goes into Freemasonry, which I guess I have to show this to you. Because, um, yeah, I obviously have to show this. I'm just going to let this run out for a second. 
I gotta it cuts off every ten minutes, so because I've just been using the free program, right? But, so in Freemasonry, they use the square and the compass, right? The square is to draw a perfect ninety degree angle, and it, it's to obviously it has to do with the square. Let's, let's keep it simple. The compass. What do you use a compass for? Mathematically, this is to draw perfect circles. Now they're using the square as a circle because it has to do with seven hundred and twenty degrees. I know everyone talks about Freemasonry only going up to 33 degrees, right? But at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, like, a square has four equal sides. Each of them is 90 degrees, so 360 degrees, and then a circle is 360 degrees. So this is representing 720 degrees and all this. You know, everyone says the Freemasons can only go up to 33 degrees, yeah, but again, this version, this clearly is explaining 720 degree knowledge, and then the G is representing the, the seventh, it's the seventh number, which is representing perfection and also representing God. This is also the colors of Tahiti, the gold and the blue. This is this is a whole separate kind of thing from fractals, but it, it kind of ties into what I'm talking about, so I'll go into it a little. And then the uh, the blue represents the like it represents the gold and blue represents the Tahiti, but a lot of times they make this black or blue behind the G, and that represents the the waters basically. And essentially, basically, essentially, Freemasons understand on a seventh like not every Freemason you see obviously not most main that they clearly have a way to get to 720 degree knowledge with that square. And, square in the circle because, you know, circle 360 degrees, and then the square is 360 degrees, we get 720 and we add them together, so they're telling you through the symbology that they have a understanding of 720 degrees knowledge, that, I guess, the high, or they're, or they're figuring it out, either way, they, they're representing the 720 degrees right in your face, but when you get into fractals, before I get into the Hebrew part of it, so, I always say that the universe is created from two principles, right? Symmetry and um, being like tying into duality. Symmetry or duality, which essentially ties into this fractal kind of portion and the Fibonacci spiral. So, out of this Fibonacci spiral, everything gets created. Now, everything, you know this because you're in a, you get born in a womb. That womb has, you're in there for nine months, most people at least, and then you're created. So, that creation point kind of ties to that square. And then the boom is the circle itself. Like all these things kind of really tie in together. Now, when you look at um, when you look at fractals, basically, it's like kind of how your parents, when you're born from your parents, you obviously take on the uh, characteristics of your parents. Like physically, you might have like your mom's nose, your dad's cheeks, or some, something like that. You know what I mean? You take on the characteristics of your parents, that family tree kind of understanding. Now, the reason why that's important to understand is it's showing you that principle of fractal nature because it's a mathematical code that's basically representing itself over and over and over and over again. So you can see this in circuitry, you can see this really everywhere in the, on the planet. There's like a trillion, there's every, there's every, everything you look at is an example of that, whether it's man-made or it's natural because it's coming from the, it's either coming from the square side or the or the circular side. And um, I'll get into the difference between the two in a little bit, but this isn't really about the Fibonacci spiral, it's about fractals and videos. So when you look at um, when you when you understand that that kind of parenting, um, I'll, I'll call like when I I'm gonna refer to that as like a like basically parenting. So um, basically getting the uh, characteristics of your parent, right? That's like a, that, that's what I'm referring to when I say like parenting at this point. So that parenting aspect, getting the characteristics of your parents, it doesn't mean, this doesn't just tie into your actual physical parents. This ties into basically everything that's, uh, and especially the more natural you are to as a person, the more natural you are to basically uh, the environment, the universe, the galaxy, the solar system, everything. You're, uh, and there's things even higher than the universe as well, but um, you, you get, you're basically a representation of that, and you, you, you manifest the characteristics in this reality, so to kind of get an understanding of that, I'll show you some pictures, so even though let's just start on the simplest sense, when you look at, like, when you look at lightning, 
it even kind of has that number seven over and over, you know, and see, you can see what I'm highlighting. See that number seven right here, clearly. Seven, seven. And then if you kept going, so seven, seven, seven. Like when you draw it out in the stick figure, right? That's what people, like every, a lot of people have drawn this out in the simplest sense. It's just a seven over, over, and over. That's kind of what I mean by a fractal. It's just a repeating pattern and then on the reverse side you reverse it and then you you know finish the lightning drawing right and that's kind of a uh, has that symmetry and that mirroring effect that you have to do it reverse on the other side so when you so you can clearly see that lightning it's just that even up here it'd be seven 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 and then the reverse of the seven over and over and over so understanding this fractal nature of the universe will let you understand how this will let you decode things basically on one sense but the one thing that people got to be careful of is understanding the meaning of things because people will get confused a lot of times just seeing how things correspond to each other but they won't understand the cause and effect of it they'll kind of just tie things together loosely and just be like this and this because they have a correspondence and that's not really true at all um, in any kind of sense. So when you look at lightning, right, I'm just going to show you some images of lightning so you can kind of see where I'm going. So you can kind of see how one lightning bolt will branch off into another one and then that lightning bolt will branch off into more and then into more and then into more and branches, right? And the key word is that branching which is key in uh, understanding practice. So you see the branching, the branching, the branching, right? Now, so all these are branches of something else, you know, you know what I mean? It's, it's, um, they're kind of branching off of something bigger. It's a lightning storm, but it's branching off of something. So this is also a picture of lightning in a fractal, uh, in fractal sense. This is literally a picture of lightning. Now, you can see how that looks, right? So, let's go to, okay, here, here's a picture of your nervous system. And that looks pretty identical. It's branching off from your brain, right? And I'll go into the brain in a second, because that clearly looks pretty identical. So you're clearly, you have an electrical system to your body, which is, for the most part, everybody should know that. So, this is kind of where that adds above, so below, or as it is in heaven, as it is on earth, kind of topic comes from, right? So you gotta understand mirrors, and uh, like I said, mirrors in a way are a portal in a sense, too, they're, they're but mirrors um, reverse the image, right? So, that's something that you keep in mind when you're looking at a lot of this stuff. So, that's what the nervous system looks like, right? And then even the lungs, just quickly. That's one way to represent the nervous system, though. Um, there's other ways to look at it, but even the lungs, you can see... Actually, I'll come back to the lungs. But you can see that, that image of it, but... Now... When you look at the nervous system... There's another image of it, right? So you can see that kind of lightning look. And it looks like more things than that too, which I'll get into, but you can see that lightning image to it. Now I'll go deeper into this. So when you get into your neural network, when it's firing, because this is like the actual scientific terminology, your neural network, when it's firing, it's sending off signals from your brain to wherever it needs to go to. So these are basically images of your neurons, and your neurons make up your nervous system, right? And your neural network. Your neural network is, um, actually I don't need to get too deep in that, but basically it sends information. That's what it's doing, it's sending information. So if, if, if the light, and it's sending it like pretty much like a speed of light, so if it's sending things like fast through your body like that, like, in, like get information, that's probably what lightning is doing in a sense too, right? If they're both, um, if they're both essentially, if they look the same, they're going to correspond and have similar. They're not exactly. 
but they're going to correspond and have similar types of, uh, what do you call it, uh, impact uh, on whatever it's in interacting with. So now when you look at your neural network, this is what it looks like when it's firing, right? You can literally see the lightning coming off of it because they're trying to represent exactly how, like, exactly what it's doing, right? Working with lightning, essentially. So now, we look at this too. Again, it's also, when you see the movie The Matrix, you, they show a lot of this kind of stuff in there too. So, these are, again, your neurons sending information, right? Now, go deeper into it. Um, this part of your neuron, so this is called your dendrite and then this is called your axon, which I'm going to show you over here. So I had PowerPoint or something, I put this on to the PowerPoint make this a lot more smooth, but it's got to be such a cross regardless. So, as you can see, the dendrite and the axon. It also looks like a tree, which I'll get into, right? It just looks like the tree top, and then it just looks like the roots of the tree, right? And there's a reason why. So, things get represent things in your body get represented on the earth, which eventually get represented on the solar system, which get represented in um, like from the planet to the solar system, and then from the solar system to the, gal uh, to the galaxy, and then from the galaxy to the universe, and then so on, right? But the, um, this, is, this is basically, uh, my sheet basically speed up the impulse of the, of the, uh, the impulse being like the, uh, the information being sent. It, these little circles, it speeds up the impulse, right? Um, the axon passes messages. Well, this whole part is the axon, sorry. This is the terminal branch of the axon. But the passive messages, um, like these little round things that circle it, or the myelin sheath, but the little, like, the, the trunk of it, if you want to call it the trunk of the, like, the, the tree, this, like, this part that you can see right here, the trunk, this is the axon, and then this is the terminal. The axon terminal is the root space of the tree. Now, these receive, this will connect to basically a different dendrite of a different neuron. And that will receive information from one dendrite, transfer through the axon terminal, and then come up through the axon. This will superconduct the, uh, the information to speed it up, and it will shoot through the dendrite through all the different branches and will connect to another to multiple different axon terminals, multiple different ones, right? And send the information to different parts of your body depending on what's needed, depending on what type of information it could be like. It could be like somatic information. I don't really want to get into it too scientifically, but it could be it could be a bunch of different things. So it could be like if you're trying to move your finger, right? And it's just like a simple it's like a simple thing on our level of moving a finger, right? But it goes through a whole uh, giant nervous network. So that, now, understanding this nervous network shows you that um, if you understand that concept of like that as a, as the as it is on heaven, as it is on earth, or, or you know, like what I mean by that Bible verse, or the as above, so below, as within, so without kind of concept. That's it. that's kind of what's happening on the planet. And that's what's happening on. Um, in the universe and in the galaxy, so it's just all that kind of stuff, right? So, uh, this is a dendrite growing. As you can see, it starts off like that number one and it kind of branches off and it grows into this whole tree concept. But, and, you know, dendrite, den a dendrite growing is equal to you learning. So, the more you learn about something, the more your nervous network grows, essentially, that's um, what it's getting at, so... Let's see. 
another image so you can see what I mean by renderation that cause. So you can see the uh, the axon and the axon terminal terminal connected to dendrite connecting on to or going through another neuron and then the chain and going from like your brain to your finger or your brain to you know it's a comp you have a com very complex nervous system in your body it's extremely complex so like they're simplifying this but there would be more things connected to each other in a giant chain I think there's like a hundred billion neurons in your body or something like that. And like I said, this whole thing, the dendrite and the axon and all that, this whole thing is one neuron. So yeah, but yeah, this whole thing, and again, yeah, it's called the cell body. I kind of skipped that because it's not really important to what we're talking about, but um, this whole thing is called the neuron, right? And again, this is one representation of how your whole nervous system looks. So there's your central nervous system right here, which is your spine, your seven chakras, and your brain. So your central nervous system, and then this is essentially your peripheral nervous system and all the other stuff out here all the other branches and so on out of the central nervous system so you could say the universe if the solar system is if the seven if they were if, if that would rely on the seven chakras and now you see the correspondence we're using that law of correspondence you have the seven chakras or whatever and then you have seven solar seven planets of the solar system that probably relates to more of the central nervous system, and then the things that are outside of it, that branch outside of it, in, uh, in the ga in our galaxy, kind of represent more of the peripheral nervous system. And that's just a simple way of looking at it, but that, um, but yeah, that's just one way of looking at things. Now, um, let's see. yeah, one thing I also actually I'll come back to that in a minute, but. Now, when you look at a tree, right? As you know what you know what tree roots look like. You know what a tree looks like. So in this image, so that you can kind of get the concept of the lungs. So you can tell the trees and the lungs look very similar, and you have obviously a a huge relationship between your lungs and the tree. Because I always explain this the most clear, um, all the time. The most important thing on the planet for all of us is breathing. If you can get around breathing, then I want to see you do it. Like. At the end of the day, like, you can go without food for a long time, you can go without water for a long time, you can go up without the sun for a long time, but you can only go without breathing forever, however long you hold your breath. If you want to say, oh, da 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 about the water and all this, even everything in the ocean, right, it, for the most part, has a form of breathing through the water. And if you want to talk about anaerobic functions, then, again, that's a whole other conversation, but I'm trying to base a whole argument that we can operate anaerobically, it's more just like an egotistical thing. It's just at the end of the day, the most important thing for all of us on the planet is breathing. Because again, you can only go for how long you can hold your breath. Now, when you take in, when you breathe in, I talked about this a lot in the spirit video that I made, but when you breathe in oxygen, when you breathe in air, your body takes the oxygen, right? It takes the oxygen through this system something called the alveola and then eventually into the alveolar sac and through the alveolar sac it that uses into your bloodstream that's where the lungs and the bloodstream meet where the circulatory system and the, the respiratory system meet now i already talked about the word respiratory respiration and spirit and this goes into the elements of things like that so when you when you take the if you understand the air element, the air air is all about direction. It's all really about, it's essentially all about direction. The wind clearly moves in a direction, you know? Like, now when you take in air, what's happening is you're forcing your blood. The more you can breathe, especially if you work out and things like that, um, you should understand this concept. But the more you breathe, the more oxygen you can send to your muscles and to everywhere in your body, right? Now more oxygen you can uh, send to these places, basically you're gaining electricity. And, let's see how much time I got on this. Um, basically your bloodstream is pumping because of the air. Like, the, the, your blood is essentially transporting oxygen to your body. And now, you need oxygen, right? And then eventually, let me just keep this up. Hold on. Okay, so you you need oxygen. 
what happens is you turn the ox you use the oxygen to power your body this is how you gain atp which is energy and if you don't understand uh, i don't want to <laughs> go into that really but atp essentially is you 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 convert pretty much except for protein which is amino acids which you use for your nitro for nitrogen and um and your uh dna and things like that but uh and obviously for your muscles protein but oxygen uh, sorry, carbohydrates, whether it be sugar, starch, um, like whether it be fruit, vegetables, whatever you'd be eating that have carbohydrates, right? The carbohydrates metabol convert into sugar, and you use the sugar to metab you metabolize the sugar to basically produce energy, ATP, which is pretty much electricity. You're basically producing electricity for your body from converting things into sugar. Now, your breathing is extremely important into um, how your system, how your bi how this bi how your biological system works into converting, um, converting things in your body into ATP into energy. So when you breathe in oxygen, you release out CO2 when you breathe out, right? Now trees are basically a natural carbon filter. Trees are beyond amazing. So trees take in carbon, which if you already know, like many people die from carbon monoxide, right? poisoning and stuff like that right trees take in things like that and convert it and release oxygen for us to breathe so there's clearly a, a ref, like there's that mirror there's that mirror image it's the exact same but the opposite as you can tell so like you can see the connection between our lungs and the trees the trees will literally give us oxygen which gives us life and then we literally give the trees life through carbon dioxide which is breathing so you can see this relationship between the two and how it's a mirror image but they're mirror mirror as in a reflection of the two and they're not one in the same but they're exactly opposite in the same it's um it's that reflection of one another so i don't really want to spend too much time on that though it's already enough time but i already showed you how again this is an image of your dendrites this is literally an image of your dendrites so you can see how your dendrites literally look like a tree, right? So your nervous system, it looks like a tree. Your, res your respiratory system, your nervous system looks like a tree and lightning. Your nervous system, or sorry, your respiratory system looks like a tree and lightning. You already looked at the lightning. <laughs> and um, we know that learning grows your dendrites so that we have to assume by correspondence that, um, what do you call it, the, the plant life of the planet is intelligent and it can learn and that's how it grows as well. Now, when you look at sea moss, if you've ever dealt with sea moss, you'll see that it looks exactly the same, like a, it looks like a fractal. When I say, fr again, it's that parenting type of thing, concept, it's like, it's like how we're related in mirror images, but there's, it's a correspondence, so at some point, it's like we're we're different, but we're tied, but we're the same in a sense. So like obviously we're not the same as sea moss, or but we have these things within us. Like a, and we're not I'm not saying we have sea moss within us, but we have a certain um, something that's something that t ties together. You could say sea moss. Um, also, you could it's not just sea moss. Obviously, it's a lot of plant life, right? This is bladder whack. You usually never see bladder whack like this. You usually get it as a herb, right? But bladder whack, sea moss. Um, lots of different vegetables and like broccoli whatever like tons of different vegetables and plants and trees and whatever right so all those things i just mentioned the dendrites in your body like the neurons of your body right the lightning that comes from the sky right or some people say from the earth because that's a form of lightning as well but either way lightning and the trees and your respiratory system and your nervous system they clearly have some kind of common factor between them all, or else they wouldn't have this correspondence, like this connection to each other, where they all have serve the same function within different systems. So that's kind of how you can use fractals in a way to decode things and see how things are tied off. I forgot to show this image of a dendrite, but this is how you can basically see how this even looks more like a tree in a, in a sense. You can see the roots and then the, the branches, right? So you can see how we kind of all branched off from a, so a certain source and then things kind of mirrored onto itself and created a certain type of symmetrical 
uh, relationship and created more and more and more and more. Now, and I kind of, it's that house and mirror effect, which I forgot to show before, but if you understand that, like the house and mirrors, it's like I already talked about the mirrors in general, but it's kind of like that house and mirrors. So it plays on your subconscious, like when you're in the, one of these, but that's essentially what it is. It's just like a, a reflection of multiple things at once. Um, or, and it's happened so instantaneously, kind of like lightning, like things happen so fast in that kind of realm where things get created. And again, that creation has to do with growth, which has to do with learning. And the one thing that we all have in common on this planet, whether you're the smallest bacteria on the planet, whatever, <coughs> whatever you are, <coughs> even if you're immortal <laughs> in a, another reality, let's say you're immortal, no matter what, you're growing. Like, you started as a baby and you grew to a certain point of maturity, and you're learning. Even if you're immortal or whatever, you're something that never dies. At the end of the day, you're still learning and you're still experiencing. So you can clearly see that that's a huge common factor between everything here. And that experience is what grows your neural network, whatever, in whatever uh, sense it be, whether it be dendrites, plants, and like, whatever it is. And all animals clearly have nervous systems and things like that, right? Even a jellyfish. A jellyfish just looks like a floating nervous system, you know? So, this Fibonacci spiral, which you find in so many different things, right? That spiral, that never-ending spiral. Uh, I've shown that video about Metatron's cube, which... Yeah, I don't want to make this video too long, but it's already been going for a little bit. I'm going to try to keep it under an hour at least. Hopefully I can keep it under an hour. showing you the whole concept of how the Fibonacci spiral, this is, again, that number 1 to 9, this is how that number 1 to 9 gets formed, but it's kind of forming in a, this is more of a three-dimensional representation in a, I don't know if this has been affecting my voice, but this is basically the number 9, the, the 9 numbers being, basically the numbers being formed, but in a representation of how it would look in a, with the Fibonacci spiral. Um, in a higher mathematical sense. It just gets into sacred geometry and all that, but you can clearly see how it started, it's basically a circle that's creating more circles, and it's creating this flower of life, and this, well, it's creating the petal, and, you know, all, it, 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 it grows into the flower of life, but it goes into that concept of learning and everything I was talking about, so. Uh, and it starts with that spiral, which is that zero, which eventually it uses that five, the golden ratio, to that number five, the square in the circle, to create more and more on top of itself. And then it, it just keeps on growing and growing and growing and growing. So every time, it's hard to understand and conceptualize, but it's kind of like it's just mirroring itself over and over and over and over and over again. So, to learn, basically, and experience. So, now you got to get your feet going to start with your feet going. Right? And then you start to get your feet going to start mirrored inside of itself. And then now the, <laughs> it's just happening more and more and more. They'll show you the, they'll show you a grow and grow, but I'm just going to stop it there. You can check this video out yourself, right? So, I'm already going to turn off that, but I'm just going This is kind of has to do with the cause of and all that sort of stuff, right? And in Hermeticism, which I think uh, is where that seven principles of the universe and the sun are not really a fault, not really into that, but I'm just explaining that. They, they, they connect those things too, together, so uh, they use all the logical principles. So every key, thought, is holding the perfect. I 
don't know where it's coming out, but basically the, um, the picture it's really is just, it's not really too important, it's not really important for this picture, it's just showing you how a lot of these things are connected to each other, but that's where a lot of people get into the coding and things like that with the graph here, so again, I don't think it's not going to be a good one right now, but it's probably just going to be, it's probably going to be way down now, but, um, the production is too, but nowadays it's as well, right, like when you start to be able to, um, really, uh, what's it called, bring out curls in your hair, depending on how you're doing these hair products, and, like, it doesn't matter if you have the, the I don't know, 4D, 4E, if you have 5, number 5 hair, um, if you don't know what that means, just with your hair type, right, it doesn't matter if you have the most dense, like, dense curls, if you eventually know how to train your hair and bring out the curls itself, it comes out in that number 9 spiral, and you can just kind of see how it falls down like this, right, um, it's that spiral, right, so, it's easier for you right here, but, yeah, it's that spiral. But, <laughs> yeah, and when I was talking about symmetry, if you draw a line right in between, right, you have the two nostrils, two eyes, two eyebrows, two hemispheres of the brain, right, if you split it, even like right here, if you get the two lips, like there's different ways you can split it, but essentially right down the middle, right, like you, you get the two, you, you get a perfect symmetry with um, women people, right, and for anyone who cares, that's someone from the Afar tribe. Um, but, now, and regardless of what type of hair is and what race you are, we all have this in our hair. Like, we have this spiral right here, right? Excuse me. <laughs> but, yeah, you have this spiral in your hair regardless of whatever race you are. We all have this, at least this crown spiral uh, for the hair. And now, when you get into, I didn't show this image, but yeah, this is essentially the Fibonacci spiral. So when you see, this is the Fibonacci spiral, but when you see the, um, those like, kind of rotate, those staircases, those spiraling staircase, it's so, like basically a lot of architecture is built, and that's where the Freemasonry square encompass comes in. A lot of architecture is built into, um, built based on using uh, sacred geometry, and a lot of the best architects, architects use sacred geometry. So if you're looking at like, uh, if you start on a simpler sense of like looking at like cathedrals and uh, European um, style buildings, whether they school or other, whatever it is, those type of buildings, and if you look at Washington DC, it's all created on that mathematical pattern. Like, And then when you look at the pyramids and all that kind of stuff, it's created with the golden ratio and things like that, but those are harder to understand, right? But for for most people, we use uh, Fibonacci spiral is basically everywhere, like you can't get away from your fingerprint, your DNA spiral, your, um, your belly button, your foot, your footprint, your toe print, your footprint, your, um, you're the spiral of your chakras, right, and so on, you really can't get away from it, like, I think this is a kind tone, but, um, there's like two different spirals happening at once, you can definitely see that spiral. Well, at least you should be able to. Then you see this pine cone, right? You can see the spiral. Another thing, too, is... Um, this is that pine cone right there in the hair. Right? Okay, so it's like one of the images, but you can clearly see that in here at all, but <laughs> that, that's what those spirals are, you know? Now, um, let's see. Some of the pyramids they built will look like that as well. There's other examples like in Thailand. There's pyramids that are all built like that, you know. I think they're called temples anyway, but so you can see the Fibonacci spiral. And this is a fractal. They they were you they understand these principles of fractals essentially and they're 
they're working with it to work with energy, to energy work at a, um, at a high science, in a high, in a high, it's basically a high science. More like a cycle power as well, but yeah, Thailand. Um, in Vietnam too. It's really all over Asia. Yeah, you guys get the point. So, let's see. Um, okay, cool, I went through all of these. So, now we're going to get Hebrew. Actually, before we even get to Hebrew, now when you look at Renaissance art, and I know I'm focusing a little bit on the more European stuff, but that's just the simplest thing to do. So take your geometry and obviously if you don't know about simple geometry. Take the geometry is basically all based off of the things I was talking about. So, look at the sacred geometry, the repeating patterns that you see in all these facets. Essentially, graphics. So, I could just kind of give you a lot of images of graphics and the presentation, but you know, there's tons of those videos that I do and stuff like that. I kind of want to more talk about how it all these things are related. But a lot of these repeating patterns, you know, these images of right they're trying to explain, they're trying to hit your subconscious mind by explaining principles by showing you how certain things are connected to it. In a sense, you need, you need some kind of understanding of a lot of these things consciously before they have a subconscious effect. Like, they will still have a subconscious effect when you see them if you don't know anything about it, but, you know, it's easier to understand things directly by just you know, looking at them and so on. Right? So, again, I'll explain a lot more about this in this specific video here. Um, I kind of tie a lot of I'll tie some more loose ends together in that video. Uh, I'll tie loose ends in that video, basically. But the sacred geometry was widely used during the Renaissance, but at least, okay, I don't know if it's about further, but basically the same. The sacred geometry was widely used during the Renaissance. Now, when you look at Renaissance art, it's all really based on this kind of sacred geometry. I wonder where they stole this stuff from. I'll show you the second page of it. I'm going to see the Kabbalah, but I'm not going to talk about the Kabbalah. That's kind of a huge one. The Kabbalah has to do with that. It isn't the tree of life, but it's the position of the Kabbalah. It's the metaphysical principle. So, yeah, take a geometry. In the Renaissance, so you can get it. It's in all art across the world, whether it's in China, Egypt, whatever. It's all over there. You look at the Chinese zodiac. It's not like the simple zodiac anymore. If you look at the Maya calendar, right? That was like the Chinese. The Chinese zodiac yeah, has that kind of stuff in there as well. Okay, I can't find it. More than this one. No. Okay, stuff like this. Things that. The things that are being oh, yeah, just worth it. So. Way easier, way easier to see. It's like, plus, it's less safe, this is more coded. So, there's a lot of safety to be honest in here too, right? But there's more coded principles. Like, you can clearly see the mirror and the blue eyes, right? Yeah, the two guys. Yeah, there's, there's a lot going on, which I'm not, I guess I'll, I'll talk about that in the time when we start to see the Yeah, when you look at Ethiopian art, <laughs> so, 
look at Ethiopian art, it's pretty easy to see that. Um, it's been understood, but it's consciously, sub subconsciously, intuitively, whatever you call it. But it's clearly understood. When you look at any African um, art, not even just artwork, if you look at any African clothing, uh, so you clearly have pretty deep understanding of all, all these types of things. Like, these Romans really been talking a lot of stuff in every culture. I think the verse in Maccabees 114 is that it would be the in the of the call that kind of problem. It just basically said that you know, someone showed up and took a different cold body and said that they could create a bad part of the thing. But, um, Yeah, if you look at any African clothing, it's just the easiest way to, that we recognize that all Africans in general would get on the same thing, but just to summarize that Africans in general have to represent clear understanding of how these principles, you know, you can see the symmetry and the, the graphic patterns and all the stuff in clothing, you know, the shoes are really good. This is a quick you know, representation that such as the shoes are. That all the different prints that are on all the different types of apps and stuff. Yeah. This is, this is represented everywhere, but now to finish this off, we've already gone on for too long. I'm not being comfortable <laughs> when I'm going on for too long, but with the Hebrew language, it's like a bridge to understand languages that were lost. So the language video will talk about this a lot more, but because uh, a lot of languages have roots with this great language. Uh, connected with the phonetic experience with the, uh, with the ancient Egyptian language and in the hieratic and all this type of stuff. But as you can see, there's a numeric value attributed to every single letter in the, in the alphabet right here. Yeah, but and you can see symbology. When you use symbols instead of letters, it says letters, but the symbols. This is block you do right here, so um, it's where you do this. Essentially, you write the symbols, right? Now, symbols represent more than one thing at once, right? And that's more about being quantum. That's understanding things on a quantum level versus a, uh, a linear level. So when you look at things like the Hebrew language, the letter A represents, for a left, represents this symbol, and plus, you know, the older version of you in different languages. And then there's the ox, right? And then in the paleo, you might see, like, an actual ox, like, uh, a little image of an ox, and that's actually how they wrote the letter left. And then the new number one, and then attribution of air. When you see a picture that explains that has like that air attribution, or if you see the number one or something like that, they might be even representing the letter left without saying left, you know? It's a coded way to speak. That's how the ancient languages were, is with coding, and I'll explain the, per the, the, uh, the more, more of the purpose of that in the mysticism video, which I'm about to do, so I don't, I don't know if I'll just do it back to back, I'll probably just do it right after this. So, and I'll try to keep it, <laughs> I'll try to keep it shorter, but. Uh, cause I don't really have much images to show, it's more of just like I gotta talk about certain concepts. So, essentially with Dramatria, we understand what, uh, I, don't, I don't really care about like explaining it on a different sense, but like on a high sense of what it is, like on an energetic level, but Dramatria, it's kind of explaining say the geometry and things like that, but really what it is, it's numeric coding attributed, numeric values attributed to letters, and then using different calculations to represent different things. So there's something called a cipher, and a cipher is uh, basically a mathematical, it's basically a coded system. It's basically what a cipher is. So let's say this is, um, I, I'm, I'm not saying this is, but let's say this is just for the sake of simplicity. This is just called ordinal, which is just like normal order. 
So let's say A represents the number one, that represents number two, Gamel three, you know, the left four, so on and so forth, right? Now let's say we call this reverse order now. So we would say like four hundred represents the left, three hundred represents that. And as you can see, I'm flipping the I'm flipping the numbers to the letters because it's reverse order now. Now another cipher might be like the Chaldean order. Another cipher might be the Satanic order. Another one might be um, the what do you call it? James Francis Bacon, or the Francis Bacon, yeah, Francis Bacon order, um, the English ordinal. Like there's there's a bunch of different ordinals. There's a bunch of different ciphers. There's a m many different ciphers. And the reason why they use gematria and ciphers with Kabbalah and Kabbalah mysticism and so on is because they understand that we live in a fractal universe and there's multiple ways of representing something. That's why the English language is essentially cursed. It's not just because we write in cursive when we use L. Like that's the that's the effect, but the cause of it is, like, like the originality of it is basically because, um, yeah, the originality of it is because, basically, they wanted to have a sim more simple way of, like, when you express something in English, it just is what it is. Like, it's not like, if I say, um, and again, this has to do with semantics, because it's more about, English is really, has a lot of semantics, and a lot of people hate it because of semantics and this is where slang and all this stuff starts coming in more and more because people are trying to make it easier to understand because people are more quant a lot of especially melanated people are way more quantum so we for the most part want to use more slang so that we can understand it without consciously understanding it like in the it, it, it we got to a point where the quant understanding things with symbols and quantum on quantum levels is easier than understanding it on a lower level you know it's like almost being having too much energy in a way but it's it not being a, a it's a bad thing but i'm saying to the current reality that we're in right so when you look at english it's like if i say c right you don't know if i say the letter c or if i'm saying like i see you kind of see or like the water c like oh like the waters right like a c um or in spanish if i'm saying c right and then that's kind of like the phonetics of it, but the semantics is when I put the meaning to it. Semantics literally means, it, bas it, it literally means meaning. So, if I'm saying the meaning to it is like, if I add context and give you the meaning to it, like, I went to the sea today, like, you know I mean, like, the water, or like, the, I went to the Red Sea, like, you know exactly what sea I'm talking about. It, there's more semantics to it and less, less coding, right? If I say, like, I see you, you know exactly what I mean by I see you, like, I can visually see you, like right, in, you're in front of me or whatever, you're in my vision. Uh, you know, if I say, um, you spell cap by C-A-P, you know what letter, you know I'm talking about the letter C, so it's adding meaning. Now that meaning is important because most people, when they're making connections between things, what they're really doing is they're really just trying to become more quantum on a level. And I don't want to rant too much, but at, in a sense, what's happening is people are kind of just becoming more quantum and that's really what it's about like they don't it's not really about them trying to find meaning to things because they they don't really have i realize a lot of people don't really have goals to uh derive meaning for certain things they might just be like studying a lot of different things and all that just to become more quantum and they don't even realize that they think they have specific goals or whatever but they they're a lot of people are just doing it just to understand coding because it's like they kind of almost just like puzzles in a way you know and i, I don't want to rant too much on that but it's just that's where it gets dangerous with using frac under like this is why i try to put a lot of words and meaning because we live in an age of english and <laughs> using a lot of words but i'm trying to put a lot of more meaning to to things and details so that we don't get lost in meanings like we don't get lost in semantics because people might think they have the solution or the the answer to something because they connected two things that correspond to each other which i just showed you how like you know trees nervous system um and like all these different like lightning and all these things connect to each other and there's way more than just that um i think i actually did forget a picture but uh i think i forgot to show this how this also looks like the crown of your hair side note this looks like the crown of your hair this, this is we live in a spiral galaxy this is the milky way right so that spiral galaxy yeah, it's just two photos of the thing I forgot to show, but basically, that was just a side note, that was just another connection I forgot, that looks like the Fibonacci spiral, and it's just showing it on a higher sense, but, um, 
but yeah, people, a lot of people are lost in meaning, you know, and they're just not really, um, they think they're finding a lot of meanings to things, but they don't truly have the meaning to it, you know? They don't like, it's that square and compass, it's that 720 degree knowledge I was talking about, it's like, they think they understand why something was created, but they're not looking at it from the perspective of the person who created it. They're looking at it from like, like from a cause and effect person, like kind of perspective. Like if you're a victim, you're not going to understand why the vic why the other person really did what they did. You're only going to understand what happened to you from your perspective. But if you're the person inflicting the, the, whatever it is, they, you, you're going to understand it from why you did it, you know? And if you don't understand things from why it was done, like that square and compass, it's basically creating using the square within the circle, so it's creating something from, from, um, from the natural world. Basically, you're not gonna, you're not gonna essentially, you're not, you're not gonna really know the true meaning to it. You know, like you're not gonna know the true me meaning of why that thing was created. Like, it's just a lot of people are really lost in uh, the connections they've made, so they can't see a bigger picture of things, and they think they've become more, uh, you know, uh, how do I explain it, more, uh, they think they've gained a lot of perspective, but they stop themselves and they can't use that, if you can use that mirroring aspect in your own brain and look at it from multiple different reflections of one another and understand the branching portion I explained and understand things from how things branched off and how, why things branched off and you look at it from maybe someone else's explanation and not your like when you say overstanding like oh that that word overstanding has been abused you know that word overstanding and understanding has been just abused like people ha aren't really looking at it from a higher sense like people will break down hebrew and be like i have an under overstanding of hebrew but they can't even speak hebrew it's like they don't have an overstanding of it it's like you barely understand it now and you just feel a lot from it so you're kind of saying this to to put yourself on a bigger pedestal to make yourself it, it's just like it's, it's just people are people are trying to skip skip levels and try to put themselves on a higher position what, what, whatever way that may be and it's kind of all ego based to, in a sense it's just at the end of the day they're saying I whatever <laughs> it doesn't really matter it'd be like I am this I am that I'm superior in some type of way I'm above you in some type of way whether it be knowledge or whatever and it's just coming from a position of lacking that before which is kind of just finding balance now right it's like someone who felt weak before in a way they're feeling stronger now by trying to give that balance by saying i overstand this i overstand it so people who know how to stay in their lane and kind of focus on one thing and not be like not kind of be like the jack of many trades and the master of none if you know how to kind of stay in your lane and kind of grow in one specific like it's good to branch out and learn other things but i mean if you know how to really focus it on one thing and master it and then actually gain an understanding of it then you'll have a better respect for how how many or how hard it is to do certain other things and you won't oversimplify anything and you'll understand the importance of a community and having many people kind of have mastery, mastered of, mastery of different perspectives of different angles of things. So yeah, I just kind of do a little rant at the end, but it's just really important to understand fractals and everything, but it's really important to understand the meaning of it from the perspective of the person who is doing it. Like, Another example is secret societies. We can all speculate about secret societies all day, but you're not going to really know about secret societies. A, you're not going to really know about a specific secret society because A, it's a secret society. It's a secret. And B, you're not part of this. It's a secret, A. And B, it's a, it's a society you're not a part of. So if you're a part of the secret society, then you'll know what you know based off of your level. If you're the person who runs the secret society, you're going to know everything from the level you know it of, but maybe you didn't create it, so you're not, you're only carrying out certain orders, you know what I mean? Now, it just goes, it goes into multiple different levels of it, so, and people have, like, a thirst and hunger for knowledge or power, which are essentially one and the same, so people, people are really just, like, thirsty for power, and that's really, when you get onto a wide understanding of what they're doing, and why they're not really, and why they act, why a lot of people are acting like they got a lot of things down but they're not really mastering it and it's kind of being like every like information and what people are knowing and all these different things are kind of just like it's almost being like whored out in a way it's like spiritual prostitution in a way it's um and people are like jumping from religion to religion to culture to culture and all these types of things because it's because of what i'm explaining essentially it's, it has to do with CERN as well which, as well as that sounds which i've explained in older videos about i think spiritual warfare and satanism and stuff but 
it has to do with um, not being able to hone in on, and the reality video explained this a little bit too, it's not being able to hone in on one thing and then master that reality and not let something push you off your path and switch things up and then waste time, you know? So it's kind of the rabbit versus the the tortoise on this. It's like being able to spend enough time on something where it looks like you're going slow to others and then um, you master it and then you eventually evolve out of it and eventually all the things that you learned add to how you do things now. So it's basically like you're speeding up. It's like um, the way to like look at that is like someone who spent a lot of time mastering like um, different aspects of physical, like let's say you're into like bodybuilding Let's say you're into bodybuilding and, like, let's say you're just into bodybuilding versus someone who's into, like, uh, yoga, mm, I don't know, calisthenics and, like, all these different aspects of, uh, basically, someone who trains more holistically, they're flexible, they're, they're, they have stability, they have endurance and all these things versus someone who's, like, a bodybuilder who has, like, a, who could have, who could have all these things, but he's more focused on what his body looks like, which is why it's called bodybuilding. The person who is able to do all the other things, they're going to excel in multiple different things at once, you know, like they're going to be able to, it's like they won the race, but the other person was just trying to have the best looking body. But at the end of the day, if you're really healthy and all these things, you're going to have a good looking body at the same time. It's kind of, they're all tied to each other or someone who's like spends their time, let's say in school, for example, and they finish school and they get a map, they, they master, I don't know, they get like a master's degree in like quantum physics right all these things that like a lot of a not just me but a lot of people are talking about on about quantum physics and things like that you don't have to explain a lot of these things to them because it's already overstood by them they just have to see it from like another perspective like they're it's like that tortoise versus hare it's like they spent all their time and something they look like they're going slow because they have to spend so much time getting that degree whatever it was masters or whatever it was or just a regular degree but then at the end of the day they're going to be moving faster than you because their base level of understanding is higher than you. Not saying that school is like the what you have to do and all that, but it's just an example. Like, it's it, it's just your it's that tortoise versus hare versus someone's like trying to get all this knowledge fed to them real quick. And that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm kind of feeding people knowledge quick, but it's to uh, kind of balance out what's happening. But at the end of the day, Hebrew is more of a quantum language, and like I said. If English is cursed, and everyone was talking about English is cursed, but they never learned a new language, I don't know where they're, why, why they're still trying to break things down to English, because English is not really going to explain things, because there's a lot of things in Hebrew and other languages that cannot be explained in English. The meaning is lost. Like, and that's just a fact by linguistics and linguistic as, experts and a lot of people, so... Even in, like, I explained in, like, in Amharic, and, uh, and then there's is right, but Ethiopian languages, right? There's seven ways of saying each of these letters. So this is like a lower version of my language. <laughs> like these 22 letters become seven, 22 times seven, which is what, like 168. Um, and then there's actually, I think like 33 letters. And then at, at a certain level, you can say it eight different ways instead. And that becomes like over 200 and uh, like almost 300 letters basically. So at a certain level, like there's just levels to this basically is what I'm saying. And I'll explain more a little bit about it in, in future videos and probably the language video, but um, if you want to understand more, you got to start doing more. You got to start really investing. It's like, it's like if you just started, if you just invest, someone who invests their time into a business and puts a lot of money into it, they're going to get a lot out of it. But if you basically put nothing into a business and you expect to get a lot out of it, you're not going to get anything out of it because you didn't put anything to get anything out of it. It's like, like you've planted a seed and then you didn't give it water or anything like that, you know? It's just not going to work. So, I don't know. That's enough ranting on top of this video. It's been, this video is way longer than I wanted it to be. But, um, yeah, fractals. Important to know, but, um, and important to understand and it's important to use to understand multiple realities and all these type of things I was explaining before. But at the same time, don't get lost in it unless your goal is like, I don't know, to learn about quantum physics or something like that. Like, start, understand where you're at and kind of grow from there, you know, and just kind of build up. But, yeah, this isn't to bring anyone down, but it's just kind of to, well, in a sense, it kind of might sound like that, but it's to bring reality into perspective, you know, bring people back to reality. But, yeah, I'm going to end it there. Peace.